Exam technique for standardized A scan with Quantel ultrasound systems. This video will review the fundamentals of standardized A scans, discussing why and demonstrating how to perform them using the Aviso S from Quantel Medical. We will discuss indications for standardized A scan, as well as some useful background on A scans and how their data complements and correlates with B scan data. A diagnostic A scan is typically performed to obtain more detailed and quantitative information about the intraocular or orbital structures and pathology that have been detected on B scan. Significant detail about tissues can be obtained using A scan, amplitude modulation, which can add to the information obtained using B scan, brightness modulation. The A scan probe emits ultrasound energy at a frequency of 8 MHz in a parallel beam, that is, a beam in which the energy level is uniform. When the sound waves encounter a surface, the amplitude of each echo or reflection returned back to the probe is displayed as a vertical spike along a baseline. The height of the spike or echo is directly related to the density of the tissue encountered by the sound beam. In contrast, the B-scan probe emits an oscillating 10 MHz beam, which returns information in the form of a two-dimensional echogram, an image of a slice of tissue in the plane of the oscillation. Each ultrasound instrument contains an amplifier to boost the signal and enhance the signal-to-noise ratio. When signal intensity in decibels is plotted against signal height in millimeters, the shape of the resulting curve describes the system's sensitivity, its ability to clearly represent different echo intensities as different spike heights, and its dynamic range, the difference in decibels between the weakest and the strongest signals that can be displayed clearly. An amplifier with an S-shaped curve developed by Carl Asoynig, MD, for standardized echography balances acoustic sensitivity with appropriate dynamic range. With this amplifier, both acuity and field of view are optimized. Tissue sensitivity. For standardized A scan, each instrument and probe combination has a specific tissue sensitivity, a standard gain level in decibels, which ensures reliability and repeatability of measurements. Tissue sensitivity can be established for a given machine and probe either by the manufacturer or by a trained echographer using a tissue model. Once set, tissue sensitivity should remain constant for the instrument and probe and checked periodically for stability and recalibration if necessary. Quantel's Aviso S ultrasound platform comes with a tissue model for calibration. To determine tissue sensitivity for a given probe using the Aviso S platform, Select the appropriate probe on the computer screen menu and choose Tissue Sensitivity Determination. Tissue sensitivity can be determined automatically or manually. First, place a drop of water onto the tissue model. Then position the probe perpendicular to its surface and press the keyboard's spacebar to initiate the automatic acquisition of 10 measurements. In automatic mode, the average is displayed at the bottom of the result table. The A scan height can be adjusted using the plus and minus icons around the relevant field. The procedure can be repeated five times, with the resulting T gain value being the final average. In manual mode, the user can adjust the T gain value in order to achieve a linear decrease in A scan spikes. Whether performed automatically or manually, when this process is complete, the echographer should press save to validate or cancel to abort. Features of A and B scans. Now let's discuss the acoustic features that differentiate B scans from A scans. B scan imaging is most useful in determining the topography of intraocular and orbital structures, both normal and abnormal. With B scan, we can see the shape, extension, and relative location of structures and abnormalities. By working systematically and performing both transverse and longitudinal scans, we can get an idea, for example, of the size and shape of an intraocular mass. Standardized A scan, on the other hand, can provide richly detailed quantitative information that adds to the B scan picture. As ultrasound energy moves from the A scan probe into the eye, any structure it encounters will produce a reflection and an associated spike. The amplitude and distribution of these spikes is a function of the size and structure of the tissue. A-Scan provides precise size measurements and acoustic information about structure's compressibility, the presence or absence of vascularity, and sound attenuation or absorption.
When an intraocular lesion is detected on B-scan, standardized A-scan can reveal a lot about the lesion's internal structure and the features of its tissue. Tissue reflectivity is correlated with the height of the A-scan spikes, and information about tissue structure can be inferred from the distribution or pattern of the spikes. Classifying A-scan structure and reflectivity. Reflectivity is classified from very low to high and can be regular or irregular. A mass composed of uniformly sized, regularly positioned and densely packed cells such as a choroidal melanoma will likely allow the passage of sound with minimal reflection back to the probe. But a mass like a metastatic carcinoma, which is made up of inconsistently sized and spaced cells, will produce irregular reflectivity. A lesion's internal structure or the distribution pattern of its cells can likewise be classified as regular or irregular and is determined by taking several scans with the sound beam aimed in different directions. If the size and spacing of the A-scan spikes remain the same regardless of beam direction, the lesion's internal structure is likely regular. The presence of vascularity in a mass can be apparent on B-scan if vessels are sufficiently large. But vascularity can also be detected or confirmed on standardized A-scan by looking for a rapid flickering motion indicative of blood flow in the valleys between spikes. The A-scan echogram represents amplitude of sound reflection with reference to time. Because the rates of ultrasound propagation are known for ocular media, precise dimensions of intraocular structures can be obtained from standardized A-scan. Ultrasound attenuation occurs when the sound is absorbed or deflected. On A-scan, this is indicated by progressive decrease in spike height within or behind a lesion. The degree of attenuation is often described by approximating the angle at which spike height decreases from left to right, referred to as angle kappa. The steeper the angle kappa, the greater the attenuation of sound. Performing standardized A-scan. We can begin the standardized A-scan from any clock hour. A point to start can be selected based on the case and any preliminary B-scan findings that indicate a specific area of interest. For a complete screen, take a systematic approach every time. We suggest beginning with the sound aimed at the 12 o'clock meridian and working your way around each clock hour. The patient should be instructed to fixate in the same direction as the area to be examined. For example, if the area of interest is located superiorly, the patient should look up. The probe is then placed inferiorly at 6 o'clock near the limbus. Once perpendicularity to the superior posterior pole is achieved, the probe is slowly shifted into the fornix, directing the sound beam toward the periphery. It is important to maintain perpendicularity of the sound beam. In addition to transmitting ultrasound waves, the probe must also be able to receive their reflections, which occurs optimally only when the sound beam is perpendicular to the area of interest. The more the probe's angle of incidence diverges from the perpendicular, the less reliable the image will be. Indications for standardized A-scan Standardized A-scan is indicated in cases where more information is needed than was obtained using B-scan. A-scan can help differentiate and measure intraocular tissues, evaluate orbital structures, and detect and characterize orbital tumors. It's a particularly important tool for evaluation of the extraocular muscles and retrobulbar optic nerve. The combined use of contact B-scan and standardized A-scan can aid in the differential diagnosis of intraocular membranes. Differences in the reflective and kinetic features of vitreous membranes, as compared to those of retinal detachment, should lead the echographer to the correct diagnosis in most instances. Vitreous membranes vary in density. On B-scan, they generally exhibit a smooth outline and marked mobility, and may remain adherent to the optic disc or near its borders. On A-scan, vitreous membranes usually do not produce a maximally high signal, and the spikes will move significantly as the patient's eye moves. Retinal detachments, on the other hand, are dense. On B-scan, retinal detachments appear folded and are only slightly mobile. When the posterior retina is detached, it almost always remains adherent to the optic disc. On A-scan, retinal detachments exhibit a maximal signal and only slight movement when the patient's eye moves. Intraocular tumors can be readily differentiated by A-scan because their internal reflectivity patterns are distinct. The retrobulbar and orbital spaces can be imaged using either a transocular approach through the globe or a paraocular approach around the globe. 
Standardized echography, combining B-scan and A-scan findings, allows for the analysis of topographic, quantitative, and kinetic features of lesions in the orbital area. Standardized echography can be used to image the extraocular muscles to rule out thickening or other abnormalities and to evaluate the retrobulbar optic nerve. Standardized echography refers both to the specific calibration of ultrasound instruments and probes and to the combination of data derived from both A and B scans. This information can help in diagnosis, management, and monitoring of therapy. In standardized echography, the qualitative topographic information obtained on B-Scan is complemented with precise quantitative and tissue differentiating information from A-Scan. Quantel Medical's ultrasound technology has brought multiple innovations to ultrasound specialists worldwide since 1993. We hope you found this demonstration of the Aviso S helpful. For more information about this technology and Quantel's complete range of diagnostic ultrasound products, please visit www.quantel-medical.com.